Now let's handle the other way around. Suppose we have a scalar called a, but this scalar is actually a function of some vector v. Now this vector v might be written as x1, x2, and let's say x3. So this is a 3 by 1 vector v. And now I want to get the derivative of this scalar with respect to this vector. This scalar right here might be, for example, the magnitude of the vector. The magnitude of the vector is always a scalar value. So a might be equal to v transpose v or v transpose v under the square root or any other scalar function of this vector. And I want to know how does the value of a change if we change the vector v. So how do we define something like this? What is the dimension of something like this? Well, to answer this question, let's go back to the original definition of differentiation. What is differentiation? Well, we want to see the following. If we change the vector v by a tiny, tiny amount dv, how will the value of a change? We can actually think about dA on its own. So this is the change in the value of the function a. Now, this vector can change in three different ways. I can change x1 by a tiny amount, I can change x2 by a tiny amount, and the same for x3. So actually, the total change of a, dA, can be written as partial a by partial x1 multiplied by delta x1 plus partial a by partial x2 multiplied by delta x2 plus partial a by partial x3 multiplied by delta x3 because changing any one of those x1 or x2 or x3 will cause some change in a right here and if we choose those changes right here to be very very small i can replace this by dx1 the change in x1 and i can also remove this and remove this and here write dx2 and dx3. So this is the overall change in the value of the function a. Now this expression right here can be written as a dot product between two vectors. I can write this as partial a by partial x1, partial a by partial x2, and partial a by partial x3. And of course I can continue for higher dimensions multiplied by, here I can multiply by dx1, dx2, and d x3. Now I can define this to be dv. So this is v, this is v. I can define this to be the change of the vector v, which seems very natural. And so I can say that dA divided by dv might be written as this right here, partial a by partial x1, this row vector right here. So partial a by partial x2 and partial a by partial x3. Three. So this is really what I want. I wanted dA by dV and I got dA by dV. So we have reached this conclusion that the derivative of a scalar with respect to a Coulomb vector v is actually equal to some rho vector. So this vector is a 1 by n if the original vector was an n by 1. Also, if you note correctly, this vector is actually the gradient vector, the gradient vector of the function a with respect to the vector v. So dA by dv is actually equal to this gradient vector. Now you might remember that before we have written this gradient vector as a Coulomb vector. So we written grad a like this as being equal to partial a by partial x1 here and then partial a by partial x2 and then partial a by partial x3. So we have written it before as a column vector. Why are we writing it right now as a row vector? The answer to this question is that it really doesn't matter. You can define the gradient vector as a row vector or as a column vector. You just need to be consistent. Actually, in some books, you find this derivative right here as this row vector. And in some other books, you find this as a column vector. And this happens because this actually right here is a dot product, right? But any dot product, as you know, can be written as, let's say, dot product between the vector z and the vector q is the same as z transpose q and is also the same as q transpose z. So this expression right here can be written as, let's get this and let's come here, this can be written as 
partial A by partial X1, partial A by partial X2, and partial A by partial X3 dot product with this dx1, dx2, and dx3. And in this situation, I can define this to be dA by dV because here I have dA and this is dV. So I can define this to be dA by dV. I can also write this as dx1, dx2, and dx3 as rho multiplied by this coulomb, which is partial A by partial x1, partial A by partial x2, and partial A by partial x3. And again, I can define this rho vector to be dv. And now this coulomb vector right here can be defined to be dA by dv. So there is no agreed upon standard for this definition. So you can choose whatever you want, but you must be consistent because we will use this gradient vector in later more complex calculations and the rules we will derive will be slightly different if you use column vectors versus row vectors. But in this section, I will always consider the gradient vector right here as a row vector such as this derivation and I'll be consistent regarding this matter. Finally, let's do one solve it concrete example. So suppose we have A as being equal to the magnitude squared of some vector. So A is equal to V transpose V, which is equal to X1 squared plus X2 squared plus X3 squared. And I want dA by dV. So this will be some row vector. Here I'll have dA by X1. So I'll have 2X1. Here I'll have 2x2, here I'll have 2x3. So in this case, this derivative is equal to 2 multiplied by v transpose.